Power is such an important part of today's world. It's involved in everything, absolutely everything. And so when we lose power, it can get chaotic. It can get scary. It can get frustrating. And uh, we're going to talk about ways to kind of take that edge off just a little bit and make sure that you're covered for when the power goes out. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sutton's Days. If you're new here, my name is Lisa, and we are all about pantry preparedness. This is a big part of uh, your prepared pantry because when the power goes out, it impacts absolutely everything anymore, right? Absolutely everything. So you want to make sure that you have all the things necessary in order to make that powerless situation a little more tolerable. We've got 15 things here. We're going to whiz bang through them because hopefully all of you in the path of Francine are getting ready and being prepared. And so this is some of the stuff you want to definitely keep an eye out. Okay. Number one, power banks. Cannot highly recommend power banks enough. Why? Because they keep the essential stuff running like phones, tablets, other charge devices, right? Ensuring that you can stay connected and informed during challenging times. So something like this. I love this thing. We have two of them. They are one of multitudes of different ways that we can power uh, different equipment, okay? Whether it be a light, whether it be charging our phones, whether it be, you know, trying to figure out what's going on in the world. These things are awesome and they last a really good long time. They've got a heck of a charge on them. Um, my car is an older classic car. Yeah, no, it's just older. It's a POS. Anyway, um, the cigarette lighters in it don't work. So I don't have a way to charge my phone in my car. So I know that if I'm going to be in my truck for a little while, because it's our farm truck, that's, that's the farm truck that we, you know, beat around in. It carries the hay and the straw and the feed and all the other stuff, right? I don't care about charging my phone, but if for some reason I have to be in that car, I take one of these so that I can make sure that my phone stays charged really important. I will leave a link down below for these. Um, they are a little pricey. They're around a hundred dollars. Last time I looked, there are different options out there for charging your phone. We have one that we hook up to our Ryobi batteries. Actually, I think we have two that we hook up to our Ryobi batteries. So if you're a Ryobi person, check those out. If you're uh, one of the other, what's the red one, Milwaukee, you know, check those out. Um, there are tons of different options for just having these sitting around, plugged in, ready to go when there's an emergency. Power banks. I hate being caught in the dark. <laughs> no, I don't. Really, I don't. When the power goes out and the sun goes down, I go to bed. That is my excuse right there, right? But you really do want to have some kind of backup light. So flashlights, lanterns, this kind of thing. I have three of these in the pantry because I can move them around and see in the shelves. Um, we have tons of different flashlights. We've got the headlamps. We've got hats with lights on them. We've got regular flashlights. We've, you know, a bunch of different stuff. And because the time is changing and because it is getting darker earlier, I have my uh, battery operated candles that are on a timer that automatically come on at 8 p.m. every night throughout the house so that uh, in the overnight hours, it's kind of like having a nightlight without being plugged in. They're awesome. I love those things. I'll put a link down below for those too. So why do you want them? Because they're reliable, right? Long lasting and they light things up. LED options uh, obviously use less power. So those are preferable. They're more efficient. They're crucial for moving around safely in the dark. If you're like me, I have learned this year that I cannot navigate uh, the outside in the dark. I have to have light. Otherwise, I do stupid stuff like fall into a hole. But the same thing goes in the house, especially the older we get. Yes, I know that furniture's been there since 1975. It doesn't matter. In the dark, in an emergency, I'm going to ram my foot into that thing. It's just a given. I have these all over the house. I found this in one of my emergency buckets in the pantry when I was organizing, right? It's a solar crank radio. Yes. Um, I have like three of them in the bedroom, one in the living room, uh, apparently one in here. They're, they're all over the place. So battery powered or hand crank radios, very handy to have. You can pick up local stations. You can find out what's going on. You're not reliant on a power source. If the sun's out, you can always power it from that. If it's a solar one, right? And it's just important because it allows you to receive important news. Weather updates, emergency information, you know, that kind of stuff. 
these come in handy. Most of these are uh, NOAA radios also. Again, kind of an important thing. So definitely I'll put a link down below for these. I have them scattered everywhere because when I find them on sale, I pick them up and then I scatter them even more places because you never know when you'll need one in your pantry. Hello, non-perishable food and water. Yes, you guys, pantry preparedness, non-perishable food and water, okay? Why? To ensure a minimum of a three-day supply. You know, the, the goal, we're shooting for three weeks, three months, okay, six months a year, but a minimum three-day supply of ready-to-eat, non-perishable food items, and one gallon of water per person per day. That's your minimum right there, okay? So if you don't have to heat it to eat it, all the better. Um, if you do, we'll, t we'll, c we'll cover that in a couple minutes, but non-perishable, ready-to-eat foods, and make sure water. Water's important too. You can go a lot longer without food than you can without water. Clean, potable water is important. Number one important. What does everybody forget? Okay, well, we have our spam. Ugh, okay, or we have our tuna, right? How are you going to get it open? Make sure, make sure that you have at least one, at least one manual can opener. Preferably two, three, four, five. And make sure they're good ones. Most of the ones you get from the Dollar Tree are not worth the dollar twenty-five that you are spending on them. They're difficult, especially as you get older. But make sure you get a good one. Sock it away so that you can open up those cans of tuna when you need to. We talked about emergency lighting, like the flashlights, that kind of stuff. But you want to think outside of the box, too. You want to think about candles, matches, solar-powered lights, uh, lanterns, you know, that kind of thing. Do what works best for you in your situation. I am a solar light fanatic. Fanatic. Literally. They're everywhere. And every year I seem to buy more and put them more places outside. I've got them all over our deck. I've got them all over our property. I've got them hanging from trees and stuff. You know, literally, they're everywhere. So solar lights I love because in the summertime, I can get a lot of use out of them. Um, in the wintertime, I get a little bit of use out of them. And every little bit helps, especially when you're in the dark. So some kind of emergency lighting aside from your battery operated. Some candles are only good if you have some matches put aside. Make sure to put some matches aside. I strongly recommend, and I had it here, but I must have put it away. The other thing that I found was um, I vacuum sealed boxes of matches. Yeah, because that way no moisture gets into them. It was my security to make sure that those matches stayed good for a really long time. So I vacuum sealed those puppies. Sure did. We're going to talk about a first aid kit for a minute. Yes, we are. Okay. I love this first aid kit. I will promote this first aid kit forever because I love this first aid kit. And I keep adding things to it. Um, I just got in uh, my monthly order. I just added some more uh, suture things to put in there because you can never have enough, right? Why? Because when there's power outages, there's an increased risk for accidents, um, and access to medical facilities can be limited. So make sure a well-stocked first aid kit is in your preps because it's crucial to make sure that everybody makes it out okay. Alternative cooking methods. This is one of my favorite. Okay, I see some of you people in my group, you're out there going, I found a fondue pot. I'm so proud of you. Fondue pots, I have been saying for uh, about a decade now, the easiest easiest, no thought necessary way to heat up some food when the power's out. Um, I know that when we had a major ice storm here, I'd have likely killed for a fondue pot because it just would have provided everything that I didn't have the ability to do at the time where I was. So you can use tea lights to heat it up or you can use sterno cans. You don't have to buy a brand new one. Go to your thrift stores Everybody and their brother has them in their garage, on their shelves, in their attic from some wedding present or something that they got 30 years ago and never broke out. You know, I love fondue, but um, fondue pots. Yes, they have a multitude of uses, but it's not just fondue pots. For those of us who love coffee, this right here could be the one thing between us and homicide. Okay. So a simple little camp coffee maker. See, it's got the little percolator, the whole deal. I love this thing. And it's so lightweight. It goes right there. 
Yes, I have one of the big ones. Yes, I have different ways to make coffee. Yes, okay, but finding ways to do all those things. Now, you're not going to find an air fryer. Let's rein it in and be a little, you know, let's let's keep it realistic, but find alternative cooking methods, okay? A camp stove, portable grill, solar cooker allows you I really, I'm hesitant to tell anybody unless you're living in the depths of Arizona to get a solar cooker because most people I know when the weather is bad enough that the power goes out, it's not solar cooking weather. You know what I mean? So think about it a little bit, okay? Um, prepare your meals without electricity. Find a way to prepare them without electricity. Ensure that you have enough fuel and understand how to use them safely because some of them are not safe for indoors. Some of them are not safe, you know in your garage next to your gas can, you know, that kind of thing. Um, if you have a grill, bonus, you can always cook on a grill. But if you don't have a grill, that fondue pot is going to make life a whole lot better. Because while peanut butter sandwiches are awesome, a nice hot cup of soup or a beef stew makes it much better. We're just getting into that season, but I get it. Warm blankets, sleeping bags. Find them. Stock up on them. They don't go bad, okay? You can you can never have, well, you can probably have too many, but I don't believe you can have too many blankets or sleeping bags if you live in a climate that tends to be cold. Or if you live in a climate where you're kind of borderline, most of the time you're not, but sometimes it gets a little chilly and, wow, you really would like to have another blanket, you know? If you have things that use batteries, then it's always good to have some extra batteries, especially this time of year, heading into the darker season, right? So um, extra batteries, like for my uh, my flameless candles, I went through and changed every single battery out from last year. And I went through about a half of one of those really huge packs of AA batteries. Anytime that you have something with batteries, make sure that you have some extras put aside. Cool. Not a ton of them, because, I mean, we do have some things that use the 9-volt batteries, but... Not very many, so I don't stock up on them, but I always have one or two extra. Now, batteries are also another reason why I have, like, the, the hand crank radio, okay? Because I don't have to have batteries for that. So, if you can find alternative solutions, that's great. But if you can't, or you don't, or whatever, stock up on some extra batteries. Uh, it'll make things a little bit easier when you need it the most. Who has 14 coolers in their garage? Me? No, we've actually managed to, to drill it down quite a bit, but coolers and ice packs because sometimes you need to be mobile. Now, the general rule of thumb with these is that, hey, if your refrigerator can't, you know, last as long as you would like for the stuff that's in there, then you can move it to coolers and use ice packs. But that's not really a manageable method in my mind. But if you need to be mobile, um, then coolers and ice packs will help you get some of that stuff where you need to go. And that'll save you a little bit of money. Personal hygiene, you guys. That's part of our pantry. We have a whole shelf devoted to it over here. Okay, everything from shampoo to conditioner to soap to toothpaste to toothbrushes. You know, all the things. Personal hygiene. Um, wet wipes, hand sanitizers, dry shampoo can help you reduce the amount of water. Uh, you know, anything that you can use to help stay clean during uh, an extended emergency because... Hygiene is important and you don't realize how important it is until you don't get to keep up on it. And then you go, wow, that's not good. Okay. You can get, you can get sick. You can get pretty sick if you don't keep up on it. So have some extra hygiene products. This one is always a stickly stickler emergency cash. How much emergency cash? I can't tell you that. Where should I put it? I can't tell you that. Okay. That's something that you need to decide. I am horrible at cash. Phil is very good at it. When I was in the restaurant business, I never used a debit card ever. Um, ever since I've been out of the restaurant business, I always use my debit card and almost never have cash. It's not a good thing. But I am learning to keep cash around. So one of my my mock, 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 mock. Look at, I have 20. Literally, that's 20 bucks in a jar. Yeah, that's 20 bucks in a jar. Why? Um, hey, you'll never see me broke because I'll have 20 bucks in a jar. Okay. <sighs> that's really, that's it. Um, I am learning to keep cash in different places. I normally use the excuse of, Hey, this is the money that comes in for the eggs. Hey, this is the money that comes in for the garlic. Hey, that's money. I actually remember to pull out of the bank. <laughs> okay. So 
Cash, extra cash on hand. Put it someplace safe. Put it someplace discreet. Have it available. Too much, too little. Totally your call. Nothing I can do about it. I love these. I think that we should all have like 30 of them because there's so many different varieties out there. Multi-tools, Swiss knives, that kind of thing, right? They come in handy. They are like the Boy Scout tool. Yes, they are. They're wonderful. You can do all kinds of things. And they have them with everything from, you know, five tools to 30 some odd different tools on there. How many of them are actually practical? That's totally up to you also. But a multi-tool helps a lot. We've got one in each of the trucks to help out in case we run across an emergency. I carry one in my bag when I carry my bag. I have one hanging in the chicken run. I, you know, they're everywhere because you just never know when you're going to need it. Okay, last but not least, number 15, get those important documents together. If you have not already put together a bug out bag, a 72 hour bag, a binder, a bug out binder, you know, with all of your important documentation, do it now. Get it together now, especially if you are in line for where these storms or where Francine is coming through. They're talking about a cat too, last I heard hitting. So um, yeah, get your poop in a group, people. Important documentation, because if for any reason you have to leave, you're going to need that. And it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. The power is going to go out at some point. At some point, the power is going to go out. And you're going to wish that you had some of these things set up. You can do it. You can do it now. You can do it later. You can do it a bit at a time. Check out the links down below for some of the items that I showed you. Add to them. Throw some ideas in the comment section down below. You know I'm huge on the hive mentality, okay? Lots of stuff coming our way. There could be lots and lots of disruptions in power um, due to the storms. There could be disruptions in power due to the chaos. There could be all kinds of reasons for the power to go out. In my area, all you have to do is blink wrong, right? If you want to see more ways to stock up for when the power goes out, check out this playlist right here. And until next time, everybody, be safe. Stack it to the rafters, my friends.